So Dave, this vehicle, it has ADOS, has a very expensive wheel and tire package in the back. I think 21 inches on this vehicle. How does ride height play into that to optimizing the vehicle? Yeah, great question. And, and probably ride height is more important now than it ever was. Okay. As far as this has got a windshield mounted camera uh, for lane departure warning. It's also got a forward and rearward view camera. Changes in ride height is going to change the field of view of the cameras themselves. Uh, different loading and spring fatigue over, over time is going to cause not only alignment angles to change, but the aim of these cameras. So in terms of special processes, procedures for to measure the ride height, what's out there and how does it differ between different manufacturers? Well, there's a couple different ways. Now, this will be the old fashioned way. Now ride height specifications differ from vehicle to vehicle. That's something that needs to be referenced uh, under the specifications of the vehicle itself. But a common place would be measuring at the rocker panel, front and rear. Uh, other places, or like we're doing here, we're doing what we call live ride height, which this is measuring from wheel center here to the wheel opening or the wheelhouse itself. Um, that is something I need to look up in specifications and see how the manufacturer and what those specifications are. Is there any way for a technician to really look at these angles and come up with an idea what's going on with the vehicle in terms of the shock, spring, suspension, and then use the alignment rack as a diagnostic tool? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Alignment angles change on independent and non-independent due to changes in ride height, but on uh, independent uh, suspensions, what you're going to see as the vehicle settles over time, camber angles are going to typically go more negative. Uh, because of that, we're going to change the caster angles and the toe angles also. For a technician, and he gets this thing that the ride height is significantly out of range, Will that result in a maybe a boarded camera calibration process? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if we change in the alignment angles, uh, particularly toe, uh, toe is going to change the tracking of the vehicle via thrust angle itself. All front geometry of the suspension is referenced off that thrust angle also. So that's going to change the tracking of the vehicle. So it's also going to change the aim of the cameras, not only cameras, but radar modules also. So in other words, the technician needs to address the mechanical angles before they start yes. calibrating cameras. That is correct. That is correct. The alignment's going to be done first. That'll be corrected. We'll correct tracking, doing it that way. And then, if required by the manufacturer, by the OE, then we'll go in and do the particular uh, calibrations, either cameras, radars, whatever the case may be, in that, uh, on that particular vehicle, in the particular order the OE uh, deems necessary. These specifications for ride height, they're pretty tight, and the tolerances yeah. are... Yes. Uh, what I'm finding out, they're even tighter on ADAS-equipped vehicles than the same vehicle without the ADAS. So if there's a problem, there's no way they could use their eye, stand back and see this higher, this one's lower. <laughs> uh, the eyecrometer? No, I don't believe so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mentioned before they have all of the different ways to measure it. I mean, I know right. there's suspension points using right. a bushing, the center point measuring the ground. Sure. getting an A, B, or even a Z angle. Also, the rockers play on some uh, specifications. Mm -hmm. Is there any way to know that off the top of your head, or do you have to look it up? No, you really need to look that up, and you know, unless you're a, a tech that's you know, just working on a certain brand of vehicles or something like that, they, they, but they do vary from model to model, even the same manufacturer themselves. Uh, some of them measure off the sheet metal, uh, wheel opening, uh, rocker panel, front and rear fascias, where other ones actually measure off the suspension themselves. They can be s done with a tape measure, or uh, what's becoming more and more popular is just with an inclinometer. We have an inclinometer here. We can plug this into our remote. Thank you. And we can actually place this at the four corners of the vehicle. This is manufacturer specific, but we can measure the control arm angles uh, with this device here. What I can do is I can show you I have my ride height targets connected to the vehicle at all four corners here. I'm just going to scroll down here and go to make additional measurements. From here I'm going to go to virtual view, live ride height, press the OK key. Now I do not have a specification on this particular vehicle here, but what I can see is I'm level across the front of this particular vehicle here, and I'm level across the rear of the vehicle also. So then I compare it to the manufacturer's specifications. Also, I can, I can document this and provide a printout to the customer too.
Great. I mean, the customer needs to know about the condition of their vehicle, especially ride height, since that's a very, very expensive repair in yes. case something yes. does go wrong. Right. And it has that possibility to take some of those nice convenience features like automatic cruise control right. out if it's not properly exactly. done. Exactly. Yeah, ride height is uh, kind of something we've just been skipping over for some time, but uh, it is a very important and becoming more important on today's vehicles. Thank you, Dave. You bet.